Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where it's food as it should be. It's where I go to begin my day. There's nothing like that first cup of coffee in the morning. It's also where I go to meet up with friends, and sometimes I even run into a book club. Panera is the perfect place to host a meeting. Everyone's happy with their extensive menu, from the delicious soups and salads to the sandwiches and flatbreads. And don't forget the takeout. The summer months are coming, and who wants to cook? You can order ahead, and your dinner will be waiting for you. That's all at your local Panera Bread. And now, enjoy the show. The book with the best title ever, The People We Hate at the Wedding. My guest is Grant Ginder. By his own admission on his website says he's just another writer living in Brooklyn. But that is not true. He is especially a writer living in Brooklyn. He's also (laughs) the author of Driver's Education, and this is how it starts, teaching at NYU, which those must be the the funnest classes ever. And (laughs) I I know about that. Yeah, there's no way your classes aren't fun. I would even like audit a class, I'm sure, and sit in and maybe even want to like do the assignments. And you can find him at grantginder.com on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and welcome to Reading with Robin, Grant. Thank you so much for having me, Robin. This is great. This is my I would, pleasure. I would talk to my students before auditing in the class. Uh, <laughs> and get some them. But <laughs> I love following you on social media platforms. Anybody that reads this book will just get a real sense of such smart humor and it, the, the wit just like oozes from this, like, you know, the icing off the wedding cake. It's just from the first moment, oh, as you know, cool Grant, oh, thank you. See, I can take your class. <laughs> I, from the moment this galley arrived, but I think I knew about the book before that, I had heard about it, and it's out by Flatiron, and it's just gorgeous. Everything about it was so appealing and exciting, and then you get to sit down and read this beauty of a book, and it's one of the ones we're telling everybody not to miss this summer. In fact, I have a, a friend's dinner tonight, and I am bringing a copy for somebody who I know will especially <laughs> love it, and Excellent. it's... It's just awesome. I mean, you can't miss this. I, what are you hearing from people? So it's been out for just a week now. Yeah. Um, and what are you hearing? What's the feedback? I, I mean, I'm hearing all sorts of things, which is, which is super exciting. Um, I've been hearing uh, some, some great feedback, um, uh, which, is, which is very flattering to hear. But it's, it's actually super It's interesting. Like, I've, I've made the mistake – uh, of going on Goodreads a few times just to uh, see what some people are saying about it. Ne- which, never, yeah. Well, I don't. Which, I didn't go on, but I know what can happen there. It's like, which is like this addictive thing, right? Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, one more. I'm gonna read one more and just like see how much it is. But the, it's totally split. It's like people are either super, super into it, um, and into kind of this, this these these really troubled people that populate the book. And then there are other people who are like, these are some of the most narcissistic people you have ever met, and I can't stand them. Uh, um, and I read those, but it's, it's actually like, it's weirdly, it's weirdly empowering to read mm-hmm. those reviews, because I'm like, yeah, they are. And that's, that's kind of what I set out to create. I mean, I, I tend to think that they're ultimately redeemable and likable, but, um, but you know, the, the book is not called The People We Like at the Wedding. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is not. It, I, this title could not be any more fabulous. And the thing is, you set out to create these characters, and this is a discussion, of course, that comes up about likable characters. And not like, mm-hmm. I mean, they're absolutely real people to me, and they're incredibly redeemable. Not sure about Mark, but <laughs> probably... He is one exception. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but they're just, I mean, they're just so real and fully formed, and, and their voices are so clear, and I, you know, actually, I'm glad you mentioned Goodreads, because I rarely go on, every once in a while, somebody will ask me to, and it's just not, I'm not mm-hmm. the best at it, but mm-hmm. I am going on Goodreads after this, and I'm putting up my review. We put it up <laughs> oh. on Providence Journal, it's there on yeah, ProvidenceJournal.com. You. You're welcome, that was fun to do. I. There's Thank nothing you. I love more than sharing books that this just set a tone and reading about how you came up with the idea you were on the train, right? You were on the train with I was. I was. So it was funny. You know, I had, 
I had come up with, I, someone actually asked me this question um, the other day. They were like, so what came first, the, the title, the characters, the concept of the book, you know, mm-hmm. how did, what was the genesis of this thing? And the, the truth is I had already been thinking about two of the characters, which were, were Paul and Alice. Mm-hmm. Um, which are their brother and sisters in the book, as you know. Yeah. And um, and Paul in particular, I had been thinking a lot about because um, years ago I had seen a special on on Dateline or or Twenty Twenty or one of those shows um, where that feature Paul has has a, a peculiar job. He works in a... <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, cra- like, who thinks of this? So you've seen it. I was cracking up in Wendy, and oh, my goodness. So, he, yeah, his job is he works, and he, he's a social worker, and he works in this clinic that treats people with OCD, but it treats people by exposure therapy. And so if you're, for example, um, terrified of germs, you Paul will make you stand in a trash can <laughs> with therapy. And so I, I saw uh. a... I saw this special about that and I was like, this is mortifying. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm clearly not like a, a trained psychiatrist, but I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> and so I started thinking about like, wow, it would be really interesting to have a character who is obsessive and neurotic in his own right, but who doesn't have this obsession to manifest themselves physically working in a clinic where people's obsessions are manifested physically. Right. And what does that do to him, and how does he sort of deal with that? And so I was thinking about Paul, that I kind of created Alice as someone that he could talk to about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, but I didn't really have anything to do with those characters. They were just sort of living in my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, yeah, like in, in, I think it was 2014, my my now fiancé and I were coming back from a wedding out on Uh, Long Island in uh in Amagansett. And Uh we were with this other couple um, who are like a lot more fun than we are, and <laughs> they one person in that couple stole four bottles of wine from the reception, <laughs> and it was like, okay, they like over ordered on the wine. One of the one of the, the, the this, this gay couple and one of the grooms was like, if you guys want to take some wine, do it. Just like kind of do it on the you know on the fly. Yeah, exactly. um, it's so always in like total larceny. Um, anyway, the <laughs> We managed to polish off the bottles of wine between Amagansett on the train, between Amagansett and Southampton, which like, Oh, well done. South, oh, I thought you were going to at least get to Mid-Island there. No, oh, you just, no, no, no. I mean, if, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, if you know Long Island, that's like a pretty short amount of time. Yeah, it's thing. really not too far as the crow flies. No. Yeah. And so, um, so, yeah, in the middle of that, my friend uh, Topher leaned forward his eyes kind of glossy, and he was like, okay, you guys, people we hated at that wedding, go. <laughs> oh, that uh, must have been so much fun. Yeah, and I, just like, I was like, wow, that would, be a really, that would be a really great name for a book. And so I kind of took that name, and then I, I started populating it with these two characters that I had already been thinking about, Paul and Alice, and I, I built out the family from there. Well, they are such I, – I love – Paul and Alice because the sibling connection is such a strong one and then they have a half sibling Eloise right. but but really the book starts off with this bang of of them receiving the invitation to their half sister's wedding and they're contemplating the costs and the texture and the I don't know the, <laughs> how it's ingrained and like the layers and the stock and they've figured out probably within a couple of dollars what has right. been spent on this invitation because her father not their father so her father is very wealthy so they've grown up with this little bit of a of a dynamic in the family so i was so i was hooked like you know from the title the gorgeous cover <laughs> And then you just jump into this story. And I'm speaking with Grant Ginder. He is the author of one of my favorite books, and I am so excited to share the people we hate at the wedding. And that train ride. So now when you talk about, back to that, when you're talking about the people you hate at the wedding, are they people, because I don't know how large this wedding is or who knows whom, but is it also like you just like talk about purple dress lady or like are they fake people too? Right. Well, I mean, that. That's sort of the irony of it all is that we, we, we had no one to name because this particular <laughs> wedding was so amazing. Um, it, was, it was actually like 
I, I, I hope my friends who are listening who are married are going to like get mad that I'm not saying their wedding was the most fun, but this <laughs> wedding was the most fun I'd ever been to, and there was no one I hated in the wedding. Um, it, that's but great. Weddings just sort of of social experiments are or like anthropological studies <laughs> are super interesting in mm-hmm. terms of you know in your twenties. I remember going to weddings. I, I'm I'm 34 now, and I remember going to weddings throughout my 20s that were super fun. They were new. It was interesting. Like you know, you were with all your friends from college, and there, mm-hmm. there was some novelty about like getting getting dressed up and then like getting wasted together. Sure. But by the time you hit your 30s, you're like, oh my god, another one, another <laughs> one, another one. Well, and they come in waves, right? Too. It sort too. of becomes right. Yeah. But there's something even I, – there's something when – once everyone is sort of on the same wavelength of, like, oh, God, another one, oh, God, another one, when you <laughs> get there, this, like, really awesome community forums yeah. where, like, you – like, your table, for example, you become, like, best friends with everyone <laughs> at the table for, like, the night, you know? And you're like, you're like yeah. we're going to do this together. And, like, you all end up rolling your eyes at the same thing and, like, <laughs> rating the speeches together. And these are people that, like, you have never met before. You know, yeah, some you of just them. connect. You just and absolutely you just totally do. Connect yeah. Because you have no other option. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I think, like, that is hilarious. and something really hilarious that happens it is, it is kind of, it really, like you say, interesting if, you're thrown into if you don't know everybody certainly this like intimate time where you're mm-hmm. all experiencing this everyone has different relationships unless of course there's wedding crashers you know that they were invited to this wedding so that they have right. you know different opinions of the bride the groom whatever people know backstories and so it's like a really not quite like being thrown into you know your freshman dorm with a total stranger they have to live with but kind right. of it's just kind like of, yeah. like that moment where you know you're sharing something and you know, and everyone has their feelings, and you know, weddings are just fraught with interesting situations, and uh, yeah. that is hilarious. So you have great time. Well, and I get invitations these days, and I'm like, I another one, you know, because, uh, uh, because it depends. Where like people say, did so and so get invited? And I'm like, don't do me any favors. I, it's fine, you know. I, yeah, you know. Yeah. Our yeah, friends' yeah, kids yeah. are getting married, and everyone like goes through this whole explanation of how many kids you know, or how many they can get or whatever. And right. like, it's so awkward. And we're like, no, it's fine. You know, totally, where are they registered? Totally. We'll send a gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, please actually don't invite me. Don't worry about it. And then they're the ones <laughs> yeah. you're just so happy to be at. And it's just like yeah. such a celebration. And I think, so just, you know, that whole idea of centering a book around this big day. And that's, of course, not totally at all what really it's about. But it, right. it's it's such a journey and so Paul's job very interesting like you were saying and this guy he works for might be the other person who's <laughs> likely not redeemable um, yeah. yeah that's probably true that, that guy's a little true. right it's a, a, little a little a little wary of the whole industry there um, <laughs> yeah, um and, and then that. yeah and then you know their mother so Donna is their mother and you know, talk a little bit about her connection to the children and where there are misunderstandings, or as much as you think people want to know, because of course, never any spoilers on reading. Right, the I will do my never. best. I will do my yes. best. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, I think the thing to know about Donna is uh, she she used to be married to a man named Enrique. Uh, she lived in Paris briefly when she graduated college, and she married this man named Enrique, who. Um, it's quite a successful French media lawyer, but also a bit of a cad. And it's with Enrique that she had Eloise. And when she was in, in Paris, she got very accustomed to, to a rather posh life. But then something happens, and, and she and Enrique divorce. Um, and she moves back to the United States, where a few years later she marries her second husband, who uh, is an accountant in a suburb of Chicago. Um, and so she has Paul and Alice with um, with her second husband, and Paul and Alice do not grow up with with really the same trust fund that Eloise does, um, which which puts Donna. Yeah, I really look at Donna as as sort of the the heart of the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. she is a mother who has been who is is inherently kind. And, and inherently 
selfless. Um, but at the same time, she grew accustomed to this very fancy lifestyle and very easy lifestyle, which she then was sort of torn away from her. Um, that said, she's, she's tried to be a very, very good mother to all three of her children, but naturally her relationships between those three children are fundamentally different. Which, and she's also been put in this very, very difficult situation where two of her children, Paul and Alice, are it's sort of resentful of the wealth that Donna's other daughter has. And it's through no fault of anyone's own, right? It's sure. just sort of this matter of fate that Eloise has this wealth and they don't. Um, and so, so Donna is constantly playing this tug of war between all three of them and trying to protect them and care for them, um, but in fundamentally different ways. Well, and see, you've, you've given Donna, this mother, such a, I mean, it's, it's hard enough to be a mother, Grant, but so you've thrown at your character <laughs> two sets, of, you know, set of, of, you know, siblings and then a daughter from the first marriage where there is rivalry and then, of course, there are misunderstandings and, mm-hmm. grow, you know, children growing up in the same family, there's always differences of, you know, times things are sure. different depending on who, you know, it's almost oh, like sure. growing up in different families. But one of the things, and I, I did mark off a lot of things in this book that were just so <laughs> beautiful, but you mentioned Donna, and I love this part where, where you write, she thinks of her children, she wants to drill inside their heads to split them open and excavate their thoughts. She wants to know what they are feeling and what forms those feelings take. And as a mother, I can tell you, that is <laughs> so true. It's like, what's in there? And let's what's set, in it, there? Let's set it, it the right that? way before I'm gone, yeah. and you've got it all wrong. <laughs> let's let's set right. the record straight. So, right. you know, she is such a good mother. And and Eloise, I mean, you know, she, also, like you say, through no fault of their own, how they sort of grew up, and I find her a really fun character, too. I really, oh, good. you know, I really did. I found her a lot of fun. And Alice all of them, I really, you know, except for Mark and that, um, and that and the uh, psychiatrist, uh, Mark and the boss. But that isn't your job as a writer is to is not to write those characters that people are going to let. You know, they're relatable and they're funny and they're flawed and they're re, they they're redemptive and all of that. But it's it's just the you know, there's just so much funny stuff and you know some tough or dark things, but just right. Is, it's like everything I love about reading is this kind of book. Thank you. And you're welcome. And I'm speaking with Grant Ginder, the people we hate at the wedding. I always say that. People know what I like. You're in for a treat. <laughs> and I know there are just people that are, you know, thank you. Thank you for telling us to read this. Uh, the pictures from Book Expo were an awful lot of fun. How was that? Oh, and- they were, oh my gosh. It was so much fun. I'm so yeah, I, they had me. I actually, I, I volunteered to do this. There was some, there was actually some word kind of floating around that it's not iron that they were going to hire two actors to wear one to wear a tux and one to wear a um, a, a bridal gown and mm-hmm. hand out these these tote bags that they made. Um, yeah, they're great. I, by the way, I got one. Thank you. Oh, good. I yeah. got one. Um, and I, my editor told me that, and I was like, you know. Screw that! I'll do it. I'll put on a tux. How fun uh, is that? Yeah. It was it was a blast. Um, and my editor's very good friend. Um, her name's Amy, and she is just she is such a kick. She yeah. went and rented like a bridal gown from for, like seventy five dollars from this costume store. Yeah, she looked great. Yeah. And yeah, she looked great, and we had a blast. We you know we were handing out tote bags. I think we handed out something like 500 of them. Wow. Um, wow. It was so fun. Um, <laughs> people were, you know, were so receptive and played along. Um, it, was, it was great. Flatiron in general has just been, I can't say enough great things about them. They, um, and my editor, James Melia, um, it's just, it's such a great place. Uh, they really I love Flatiron. Yeah, a I mean, great shop over there. I'm, I'm a huge fan and always have been of, of Amy Einhorn's. And so, oh, she's with, wonderful. She, yeah, huge fan of hers. Love her. And when she first went over to Flatiron, I started hounding her. As you know me a little, you can <laughs> imagine I'm persistent. And she was like, "We don't have the list out yet, Robin." But as soon as we do, and then I check in in a few months, and 
Amy, do you have your title? Because <laughs> I <laughs> just didn't want to miss a flat iron title, you know, and she's really patient with me, and so we've gotten to do some great books together. But really, um, Book Expo, and luckily it wasn't so hot, right? The weather was decent, when, right, when you were there? And so walking was, around. You know, it was, yeah, it wasn't that hot uh, in general. I will say in a tuck, it yeah, I felt guess. a little bit hotter, <laughs> uh, but – it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't that bad. And we were that's, inside. And that's fair, because one year when I was there, it was just brutal. So I remember thinking, this isn't as bad as it could be. But people are so, the energy at the Javits Center and all of these book lovers and all of that. It's so is, incredible. Right? It's just palpable. And then you see a bride and groom walking around, handing out totes, which are awesome, with this gorgeous, <laughs> I don't know, seafoam green, blue, whatever color yeah, it is, yeah. the color of the summer. And so people are so happy, and I'm glad to know that you really, you must have really gotten to talk it up because you just can't pass this cover and not want to grab it. It is, it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, they did such a great job with it. Um, I, I find myself staring at it like just, just in awe that like that's the cover that I got for my book. It's so um, cool it's because really cool. yeah, you just you want to you want to pick it up now at the so you've had some uh, book events and like I said the mm-hmm. book well when this airs will have been out for two weeks but do you, do people come up and tell you their wedding stories? Is that something they people do? Want to share? It's actually funny. I mean, it's and it, there are things where I'm like. I they'll start telling me them and I'm like oh you don't have to tell me that <laughs> like that, that sounds personal or but more so I mean and, and Robin you made this point a little bit earlier I mean sort of the great the great mystery or not mystery but the, the great and this is really a spoiler alert but it's really more about kind of the journey to the wedding exactly. than the wedding itself right sure and sort of the 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 family you know all of that that kind of messy dysfunction that paradoxically something as joyous as a wedding can bring up for a family. Sure. Um, and so that I end up getting a lot of that stuff and yeah, like from total strangers. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll be like, Oh my God, my sister, at my wedding. And I'm like, Oh, you don't need to tell me this. You don't have to tell me this. <laughs> well, you could do um, a follow up to it. You know, let the stories, you should set out like a little guest book and let them say, you know, give you a little bit of their story oh for more God. information, please email. And you could do like the follow up because I I can imagine because there's some kind there's this ama- amazing connection between writer and reader and mm-hmm. this idea of of you know many authors are so compassionate and they have so many stories they've done research there's so much so from the title they may think it's otherwise and then right, right. they're bringing you their stories about who they wanted I mean you know down to like telling the photographer, you know, make sure not to get this one or this one's not staying yeah. in the family long, put them on the edge, yeah. we'll cut them out. Back in the yeah. day, you could edit out people more easily now, but I'm sure it's like, just read the book, <laughs> you know, suggest it to your book club and then let us know. And uh, I don't need to hear all your stories, but yeah, I can imagine they just <laughs> launch right into it. And is that something you do? Cause this would be such a fun one to do at a book club. Hey, do I do book clubs? Yeah. Do, absolutely. Oh yeah. my gosh. Absolutely. I, I mean, she, to your point, we were saying earlier, there, um, or just a few minutes ago, there is there's something so incredible um, the connection between a writer and a reader. Yeah. And I, uh, I think the you know like the empathy goes both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this sense of connection, and you know, hoping that I am able to give voice to something that someone else has felt or experienced. But then also vice versa, how is someone who is reading this work and is interacting with these characters, how are they able to give them life or give them voice or nuance in their reading and interpretation that, that I never was able to consider? Um, that is, it's, and, and you get that with book clubs. You know, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I can only imagine the conversation, and it's one that I'm recommending to book clubs because. Thank you. The, oh, you're my pleasure. I mean, they'll thank you. They'll thank me because <laughs> the conversations that they will have, because really at the heart of the books that I love the most, they're about family and people and those connections. Right. And so when, like you say, at a joyous time like a wedding, all the other stuff comes out and the, right. the feelings people have or slights or who's not speaking to whom or why or misunderstandings that, you know, weddings and funerals and all of, mm-hmm. all of these really, monu- you know, monumentous times, you know, just everything is heightened. So that's where the drama and the comedy and those things that, you know, you have to laugh or else, 
just like yeah. Lose it. Well, no, exactly, and it is just like heightened drama and heightened sense of comedy, right? And like yeah, everyone's emotions, yeah, and particularly at a wedding, are at this place where it's like everyone, for whatever reason, is so raw. Absolutely. Uh, and so, and that like fascinates me. Well, that's um, why the bar does so well, and that's why the. Uh, yeah, yeah, the cake exactly. doesn't matter what the cake's like; it's going to go. And there was some very <laughs> funny go. part about the cookies in there too. Oh, I think it was um, Alice when she's going to her therapy, um, her oh, therapy yeah. group. Yeah. Something about the yeah. free food and something about the awful cookies, but they're good in that space. I don't know. It was just funny. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's hilarious. I can't wait to Thank see you. what you write next. And people should go to GrantGinder.com. Find him on Facebook on Twitter, and I don't know, is there a tour schedule up, or did I miss it? Where there are, so there, the, the information is up at uh, McMillan's website, and okay. so um, you can find all the stuff there. I'll be doing some things. Um, I'm doing something here this Friday with another uh, with, a, with a, a brilliant author named Rakesh Chital who wrote a, a wonderful book called No One Can Pronounce My Name. We're doing oh, something. yes. It's a great uh, yeah, I love that title. It's so, and the book is so lovely, and we're doing something at uh, the New York Public Library. Mm-hmm. And then um, on the 29th of June, I will be in um, in Nashville at a oh. Massive Bookstore. Oh, how cool um, is that? Love that. Yeah, I am so excited for that one. And then I'm doing, uh, in the next week, some things on the West Coast uh, in California. Okay, so uh-huh. people can check Macmillan's yeah, website absolutely. to absolutely. see where you're going to be. and. Yeah. What's something that you're reading this summer or that you read recently that you want to share with the audience? Everyone wants to know what the writers are reading. So I read – it's not a new book. Um, That's okay. I read Rakesh's book, mm-hmm. which is incredible. I read, in terms of new books, um, Gabe Habash's book, Stephen Florida, is mm-hmm. explosive. It's a sports novel-ish about wrestling. Um, and sort of his descent into madness, which is oh, really cool. wonderful. Oh, wow. Julie Button's Marlena yes. Um, yes. is absolutely beautiful um, and, and a really sort of moving and, um, and haunting portrait of, of a friendship between two women. Um, and then I read a book that came out, I believe in 2004, by Peter Cameron um, called Someday This Pain Will Be Useful to You. Oh, good title, uh, too. Which, it's so wonderful. Um, it's, uh, it looks at the uh, one summer that this 18-year-old boy has in New York before he's meant to go off to college. Um, it's a wonderful coming-of-age no- novel. It has some characters in it. it in fact, it, I, I, it made me think, I mean, I, I, he is a genius, and I'm nowhere, nowhere near him in terms of my <laughs> writing, but um, uh, he know, does the thing that I really try to do in People We Hate at the Wedding, which is create characters that, that are, are kind of difficult to like, um, because I think um, we've, as readers, we've gotten to this place where we're only looking for characters that are relatable and likable, uh, which I think is a really dangerous thing, uh, because I think it prevents us from being empathetic and trying to understand the experiences of people that we might not initially kind of vibe with. Um, and he does that so well in this book. So, And what's uh, that one called again? I have to write that down because that's what I like. Uh, I mean, that's why I'm so yeah. drawn for many reasons to the people we hate at the wedding because when I'm watching film or when I'm reading a book, I don't want to just see likable, whatever that even mm-hmm. means, kind of characters. Right. I want to see you know, layers and understand where people come from and why they are the way they are. And mm-hmm, that doesn't mm-hmm. mean, you know, that they're going to be lifted up in some way, but maybe understandable. Or, exactly. You know, and exactly. that's more, I think that's more interesting to read about and to watch. I it's agree. I much agree. more interesting. Wait, so what's the 2004 book? I have to write this It is called Someday This Pain Will Be Useful to You. Okay. Well, that's and funny. The, Someday, okay. The author is Peter Cameron. Thank you, because one of the things I always like to say when we're going through something interesting is, you know, this might be funny in in, uh, 20 years or, you know, this will be great in a story. So it's the same idea. And I think um, there are those days where it's very impossible to see that, but sort of seeing past, like, let's just go to the part where this might be funny at some point. Right, right, right. right. We skip to 20 years from now. Exactly. But there's no way, you know, and you don't want to miss any of that time either, but you're just sort of having that sense of, like, this, let's use it somewhere, or as Nora Ephron. (laughs) would say, you know, yeah, his mother yeah, yeah. 
right? Her mother would say everything is copy. So that that kind of <laughs> that kind of idea. And um, yeah, and you know, Julie Bunton is coming to read here at Point Street next week, oh, and I really can't wait hello. until you. Yeah, pardon? Tell her hello. We actually I, we went to grad school together. Oh, very cool. I will absolutely tell her hello, and and I look forward to having you come to Point Street at some point. You're welcome. It's it's third Tuesday in Providence, and you are always welcome. And before I let you go, one of my favorite lines from this book. Love may dis- the here it is. Love may disappoint, but that doesn't absolve us from the duty of loving or trying to love. And Grant Ginder, you've written a beauty, and I am thrilled to share it with the reading with Robin audience. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. This has really, really been a blast.